Welcome to 34th lecture in Mechanics of Materials. We started off looking at some basic concepts in mechanics and then we looked at four equations that connected those four concepts and then we went ahead to solve some boundary problems using those concepts and equations. From there we estimated what the displacement and the stresses in the body are and then we used the failure criteria which was a material failure so to speak wherein we said that if the stress exceeds a particular limit then the failure of the body would occur. In that, in the last three lectures we are looking at various failure criteria for pressure, hydrostatic pressure sensitive and hydrostatic pressure insensitive materials. In particular we looked at Tresca criteria and Warmeister's criteria for hydrostatic pressure insensitive materials and then we looked at uh, Rankine or maximum normal stress criteria. More Coulomb criteria and Draga Praga criteria in quick for pressure sensitive materials. Okay, and then we said that if the stress exceeds a particular limit defined by the failure surface of these failure theories, then it will fail or it is on the verge of failure if it is on the failure surface. That is one mode of failure. There is another mode of failure wherein a given body would fail just because of stability reasons, meaning. If you have a ball which is sitting on a trough like this, ball sitting on a trough like this, okay. If I move this ball a little bit on either side of the trough, it will return back to its equilibrium position, okay. On the other hand, if I have a ball placed on a surface like this, if I move this ball on either side, it goes to a totally different state of equilibrium state. Okay, So basically what happens here is a small disturbance alters the equilibrium state of the body. Okay, Similarly, I can have a situation wherein I have the ball somewhere here, a small disturbance will take it to somewhere here and will stay put there, there won't be further deformation. Whereas the second case a small disturbance would take it to some position here, will take it to some position here or much more deeper depending upon how the shape of the surface is. Here if I disturb it, it will come back to its original position. Here if I disturb this, disturb it somewhere here will return back to its original position. Okay, So you want the body to be in this state which is called as the stable equilibrium state. You do not want the body to be in this state which is called as unstable equilibrium. Or neutral equilibrium is okay, but you still do not want because it produces large deformations. This is called as neutral equilibrium state. To understand this in terms of a structure, think of a funnel placed on its base. This is an equilibrium configuration of the funnel. Okay flat edge funnel based on its base. Okay. Now what happens if I give a small disturbance, if I tap this funnel to occupy some position like this, some position like that, then it will restore back to its original state, it will come back to its original state because there is a corresponding moment which will help it come back to its original state. Okay. On the other hand, if I have a funnel based on a strip like this, okay, a funnel based on a strip like this, then if I turn it, the uh, CG of the funnel falls 
outside the base of the funnel if i tip it somewhat like this okay this the cg falls outside its base and then it will topple over okay on the other hand for neutral equilibrium i can have a funnel resting on its a funnel resting on its sides funnel resting on its side is an example of a neutral equilibrium configuration wherein if i perturb it it will stay put in the perturb position okay so basically now you want the body to be in a stable equilibrium configuration because that is a state which you prefer the body to be in okay so that it doesn't show large deformations or it doesn't undergo see large stresses in the process of going to unstable equilibrium states okay now next thing you have to understand is till now we have been writing our equilibrium equations in the undeformed shape okay for example if i take a beam element if i take a beam which is simply supported and we idealize it as a line element like this or it was the axis of the beam and you add some loading coming in here you know that the beam will deform into some shape like this okay if it deforms into some shape like that then you didn't account for the fact that you didn't write the equilibrium equations the deformed configuration that is you didn't say whether this force remains vertical or perpendicular to the deformed surface okay if it remains vertical then whatever we did was somewhat appropriate but if it remains perpendicular to the deformed surface then the lever arm should change okay those effects we didn't consider we just took that uh, the load to be acting on the undeformed sh shape and we wrote the equilibrium equations to get uh, dmx uh, mz by dx plus by equal to 0 and so on the equilibrium equation that we got were based on uh, undeformed configuration equilibrium this is evident when you look at a truss analysis which you have done in your previous course in engineering mechanics so when uh, when i have a triangular truss like this which is simply supported at these ends and i add some loading coming in your p and q you didn't ask the question what is the deformed shape before writing the equilibrium equations you wrote the equilibrium equation in this undeformed shape and you assume that the deformed shape will be close to the undeformed shape that it won't matter significantly okay that's a good enough argument if the deformations are small but what happens is these tell you that there's only one deformation that is possible for a given truss since you are writing the equilibrium equation in the undeformed shape okay if the truss were to deform then you will find that there will be multiple equilibrium stage that arises which are possible to illustrate that let's look at an example wherein i have this two element truss with a point load p acting vertically down now if i assume that this is not a small deformation problem but a large deformation problem then i have to account for the fact that this truss will deform into some shape like this wherein this deformation delta y is significant okay then what happens you'll see that there are more than one solution that becomes possible i'm going to illustrate this in this lecture by not using this complicated truss which is simple but yet complicated for our purposes but i'll demonstrate it with respect to a single member in compression okay for example when you think of a member in compression say a column is subjected to a compressive force p we will think that it is going to deform this like a universal state of stress and then we will think that it will deform into some shape like this 
right this will happen if the column is what is called as a short column or a stout column but if the column is slender like a uh, scale then you will find that this is not what happens but something different happens let us see what happens i have the scale which is slender here in this dimensions okay now i am applying a compressive stress you can see that it deforms quite significantly in the lateral direction it is not getting compressed it is not going down like this if i apply a compressive force here you can see that it is bending on either direction okay it bends on either direction but it doesn't bend in this way it doesn't bend in this way but it bends only in this direction or in this direction depending upon some criteria okay it bends like this or it bends like this okay it doesn't do what we saw as it would do if it were a stout or a short column okay so basically now you find that there's a discord between your analysis expectation and the way the body deforms so you have to reconcile this the reconciliation is by what you are going to do in this lecture okay the reconciliation arises because you wrote the equilibrium equation for this column in the undeformed shape whereas you have to write it in the deformed shape okay so now what we will do is we will take this column instead of a cantilever a fixed chain and a free end column we will look at a simply supported column the pin here and a roller here you understand that a roller should be in this direction because only then it will allow for axial compression otherwise the member will only deform whatever load you apply this support reaction at b will take all the axial load that is applied okay if the range or if the roller in the other direction the support reaction b will take all the reaction force and not allow the column to uh, compress okay now let's assume a coordinate system let's still assume this is x this is y and outside the plane is z out of plane axis is z okay so let's assume the cross section has some cross section shape which is arbitrary which is y and z acting like that okay now you would expect that this column to deform into some shape like this where the roller moves down here and it becomes a roller that okay to the applied load but let's investigate whether there's an alternate deformation possible which is this okay that is the column to bend like what the scale did in our case okay you can bend along y direction or can bend along z direction what is the criteria you will find out in a short while okay in which direction it bends okay